Yes, indeed. All of the charms. All of the... Little winks. Bye. All of the little smiles. All of the banter. is all paying off now. An additional free mince pie from the ladies of Costa. And not only that, how much do you think it paid for this? Oh, well, what's the actual, what's the recommended retail price? £2.80 for a flat white. What does the Feathery King pay? £1.80! Oh, maybe they deducted some points from his Costa points card. I think not. No, 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 no. No, nope, this was a, a pound discount uh, just because of, uh, I guess, because of the amount of joy and cheer that I bring uh, to the girls of Costa. There was a man in there today. Didn't speak to him. Wouldn't. The amount of joy, cheer, wonderment, and sort of, I guess, fame by association. You know, they look at me and they think, wow. You know, there he goes. He he used to make dubstep. Incredible. He now gets upwards of 150 views on his videos on YouTube. Incredible. Incredible. He leads a ragtag crew of thugs, villains, rogues, tinkers, vagrants, uh, and crows in a mortal battle to bring on the end times. And why shouldn't we give him coffee for a pound cheaper occasionally, you know, and a free mince pie? And I think that's a good question. I, I think it's a good question. Well, why shouldn't they? There are no good answers to that. There are no good answers. Guys, how was your weekend? Is it okay? Are you all all right? Are you, are you all, you know, still upright, roughly? You know, yeah. Still breathing in and out. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Still putting left in front of right, you know. What's going on? Foghorn D, he's there. Golly's there. Wodge. Wodge, thanks for the phone, mate. Got it. Mitten came through on the posting. Uh, that's very kind of you. Very, very good boys. Um, the Cotswolds cartel are in the house. Uh, that's, uh, I, I guess, Squidge's new cartel. Nice to start a cartel, I guess. Emma's in the house. Uh, Chode's in the house. Sean, Big Shawnee Simpson's in the house. Stinny's in the house. Uh, Den Tweed. Real Akeem. Just... You know, just decent, honest, God-fearing folk out for a better way of life. And, you know, watching this show in the morning has surely got to make you think that... What is that? That's on the blink. Right, okay, it's back. Uh, it's got to make you think that, yeah, there must be something better out there than this show. Because, Jesus, this is not good. You know, so it, I'm, I'm hoping that it's inspiring sort of from that, you know... F uh, from that level, you know, where people go, fuck, you yeah, know, state of this, Jesus, there's got to be, man, this is bad. Like, stuff can be better, you know. And so really, really, you know, as Yaz sung all those years ago, the only way is up, you know, because you really, I mean, you really are at rock bottom, you know, if, if you watch this show every day, you know. So, so it. It literally cannot get it cannot get any worse. The if the only way is up, it means that things literally cannot get any worse. So, yeah, the only way is up, baby boys and baby girls and ba and baby Z's, they bees. Listen, they bees. The only way is up, okay? And I'm here, drag you, kicking and screaming, largely by the dick, and and just. For, God, phone's off on set. Unbelievable. Who would text me at a time like this? My girlfriend. She's insane. Surely. Uh, guys, look, I love you. Well done. Well done for making it through the weekend and to hear where, where we will discuss the things that need to be discussed. We will play the shoe throwers. We will talk the toot and we will make the jollies and we will all be entwined in a bout of passionate digital lovemaking. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't coffee and mains? Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, 
that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy and that's funny and it's 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 kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that it, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you and if you don't play that out you actually fail Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm uh, uh, and, of course, on, on the YouTube. You will have beheld... Behold? Beheld? Yeah, let's go with beheld. You will have uh, been beholden to... You will have beheld this fine jacket Oh, uh, that I'm wearing here. It's that time of the year now where the, the, the bomber can come out, the golden, the black and gold bomber can come out. Uh, with all its glory. Where would you get an item like that? Rankin, I hear you say. Well, it's a bespoke item. It's not available in stores. You know, you can't purchase this online. You know, you can't, you know, can't learn it in a book. This is uh, a little uh, Vietnam number. Entirely bespoke. Tailored. Sure. See that? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. See? Look at that. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. That wouldn't happen with a normal bomber jacket. I'll go like that and I'll go, Vroom! no, 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 not with the finest, the finest tailoring Hanoi has to offer. Anyway, listen, fucking hell. Guys, what's going on? Where are we? What have we got in terms of news? Parents slammed for re-gifting kids confiscated iPads as new ones for Christmas. <laughs> That's a good hustle. You've got to respect the hustle, man. You've got to respect the hustle. Let's get this up on the... Uh... On the viewing viewing platform. Oh, it's already up. Wow, would you look at that? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Parents who took away their children's iPads in the summer and told them they'd been sold are <laughs> now planning to wrap them up as presents, give them to them as new ones. That is a quality hustle, man. I'm I'm into that. I think that that works. That's <laughs> I bet you ten pounds this is just bloody uh, the Mirror reporting on Reddit. Oh, what a surprise. Yep, it is just a thread on Reddit. There we go. Is it from the Am I the Arsehole uh, thread? Uh, or Am I the Arsehole? I wouldn't be surprised. What do we think? Go on, they wrote it on Reddit. Yes. Yes, it is. Or <laughs> uh, Am I the Arsehole for re-gifting my kids their own tablets for Christmas? Yes, yes you are, but you got to respect the hustle. Come on, you got to, you know, and like, that light is going to get banned. Would you, would you see it? You know what, it could be the pug socket. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, we, were you serious? Listen, buddy. Where's your fucking plug from? Well, I swear, there'll be trouble. There will be fucking trouble. Oh, my God. Right. Okay, fine. That light's going in the bin. I don't know why it won't go in the bin. I'll just change the fucking bulb. Am I the arsehole for re-gifting my kids their own tablets for Christmas? Yes, you are, but you've got to respect the hustle. End of story. Okay, guys. Student nurse reveals she can make up to two and a half grand a night performing at strip club. God bless her. That's a hustle. You've got to respect the hustle. If my name ain't Gary Wienerchuk. You've got to respect the hustle. Student nurse who strips to pay for her studies uh, says she can earn two and a half grand a night. But most men just want to chat. Well, most guys need to duck in, stop being such cucks. Don't go to a strip club for a chat. God, dear. What a state, a state of the world. Unbelievable, isn't it? State of the patriarchy. When you've got to go to a strip club for a chat. That, <laughs> that is rough. The patriarchy fucked up on that one, didn't they? Jesus Christ. You know, if, you know the boys, the lads... You know, the fellas are having to go and pay to chat to women. That, that doesn't seem that patriarchal, does it? That I, Well, anyway, who knows? 
guys. Who knows? Well, again, you got to respect the hustle. Fuck, I, I do think it is wild that nurses have to pay. Nurses have to pay to train to be a nurse. That is bizarre, isn't it? I, I anyway, guys. Doctors urge people not to attempt the viral butt sunning trick. Don't expose your unbleached anus to the sun to direct sunlight for a while for too long. Okay. okay, let's see what's saying. Early this week, an Instagram influencer hit headlines after showing off her bizarre butt sunning ritual, which she claimed gave her more energy, helped her sleep, and improved her libido. Sounds good, eh? And all you have to do is whip out your anus and point it towards the sun. Uh, except now, why are they blanked out? Anyway, uh, except now they regularly swear in 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 articles on that. But why are they now asterixing out anus? Except now an expert has come forward uh, to saying, come forward to saying that the yeah, expert come forward to saying that butt sun bathing or perineum sunning is bad idea and is for dumb millennial, dumb millennial bitches, basic dumb millennial, putting anus in sunlight and getting burnt. It is crime against God. <laughs> uh, who'd have thought? Anyway, US-based gynecologist, Dr. Jennifer Gunter. Good name for a gynecologist. Just sounds right, doesn't it? Dr. Gunter. It's going to have a look at your vag. Uh, Took to Twitter uh, to warn anyone considering giving it a go. Uh, retweeting an article about the Instagram where she wrote, I feel confident when I say that the anus and the perineum have no special sunlight contracting abilities. Uh, or concentrating abilities. Uh, you can get melanoma on the vulva. And sunburns are very painful. It doesn't sound like much fun. When it comes just days after Instagrammer Megan from California shared two posts dedicated to her usual sunbathing technique. Listen, guys, if you're the sort of person that takes health tips from Megan from California, Megan the influencer from California, that's where you're getting your health tips. I'm not saying you des certainly not saying you deserve to get melanoma. Um, but I would say you are, you do deserve to get a sunburnt anus. Right. <laughs> Megan claims that letting sunlight into her butt comes with a whole host of benefits. It's truly more energising than slamming cups of coffee. Okay. But even if you pay less for the coffee and get a free mince pie for it, I doubt it. Megan warns that people should only attempt it for around 30 seconds, up to a maximum of five minutes, because the intention is not to tan your butthole. No, you need to bleach it. Guys, come on. Should I mean, should you bleach it first or after? I mean, is, is this a good way to sort of soften it up a bit for the bleaching and the waxing? I don't know. You know? Is this, or is this the sort of bit that you, you get it out and then let other people decide whether or not it needs bleaching? Some, some don't need bleaching. You know? I mean, lucky. Lucky for them. I mean, that just goes to show that, you know, life isn't fair. You know, that some people don't need to bleach their anuses. Whereas the rest of us have to pay a small fortune to have, you know, have a group of up to, up to five or six people rally round down there, getting the job done. You know, at huge expense. Both, you know, time, money, labour. It's, it's outrageous. But, you know, it's the, that's the sort of thing that keeps the economy going, isn't it? You know, without it, God... Britain's gross domestic product go through the fucking floor. It's only, it's only the money from anal bleachings that will get us through Brexit. I think you know that that really, you know, anal bleaching is the sort of white horse that Brexit will ride, ride through on. You know, without it, it's looking pretty bleak, guys. It's looking pretty fucking bleak. Let's have a look at shoe throwers. What have we got? New bits. Night horse. Posse. Quicksilver, Inside Info, Vapor Trails, Scientific, uh, Back Chat, Emperor and Dread, Walking in Circles, Calibre, Lock Off, Malix, Pink Floyd, Live at Comfortably Numb, Pink Floyd, Live at Neb... Wait, no. Anyway, Gladiators, IHR Remix, Maztec Gridlock. A lot of bits today, new Teddy Killers as well, new Bunshin, fucking hell man, new Forward. Jesus! Man, we got a lot to get through, guys. We got a lot to discuss. 
Uh, let's start off with Posse. Our boy, our fella from the other side. Night Horse from the album Chrysalis. I mean, are th these are just getting really... really uh, I get confused. Now that's an EP. Or was it just the No Cats one was just... Ah, oh, fuck it. I don't understand anything anymore. God damn millennials. <laughs> Stuck into this now. Nice bet. Night Horse by Posse. Vision. It certainly is. Posse, he's a good boy. He's a nice boy, you know. He's a good little lassie. Come on. Uh, yeah, man. Listen, right? Uh, society to protect apostrophes shuts down because of barbarians. Well, okay. So let's get involved. Let's see, see what these barbarians are all about. There's a good old boy. Look at him. Good old boy, John Richards. Has hung up partly Parkinson, 
I would imagine has been, I would hope for this, has really, really pushed the boat out in terms of making sure this article is grammatically correct. But we will see. I, I look when it comes to the finer points of grammar, I'm not your guy. Yeah, I'm. You know, fairly dyslexic. It's not. It's not going to happen. Uh, the battle to save the much abused apostrophe has taken a bitter blow after a society dedicated to preserving it announced plans to close. Well, listen, here's John Richards, yeah? He's hung up his apostrophe after fighting a losing battle for 15 years. Listen, man, he, he, God bless him, yeah? Seriously, God bless him, but he's on his way out, yeah? He's he's not gone, not, he's in his twilight years. He don't need the stress. Are there any underlings? Are there any young people, you know, that want to keep the dreams of actual grammatically correct words and sentences alive? Or do these godless fucking millennials and Gen Zs just want to want to run the apostrophe ragged over the rocks of online discourse? Just fucking forget they even existed ever. Chairman of the Apostrophe Protection Society, the APS, John Richards declared that ignorance and laziness is one. Yeah. Well, if you're fighting a war against ignorance and laziness, man, you better have some weapons of mass destruction because you're going to be heavily outnumbered. The former journalist set up the APS in 2001 after he retired from a career as a journalist. Yeah, the former journalist had a career as a journalist, yeah. Good stuff there, Hartley Parkinson. Now age 96, oh, he's a good old boy, look at him. He just wants to get Brexit done. <laughs> Writing on the Society's website, he said, Fewer organisations... Uh, oh, no, sorry. Now age 96, Mr Richards is calling time on the Society, which lists the three simple rules for correct use of punctuation mark, of the punctuation mark. Uh, writing on the Society's website, he said, Fewer organisations and individuals are now caring about the correct use of the apostrophe in the English language. We and our many supporters worldwide have done our best, but the ignorance and laziness present in modern times have won. I will say it's an odd it's an odd hill to die on. But you know, you gotta have a cause, aren't you? Stand for something or you fall for anything. Mr. Richards started the society after seeing the same mistakes over and over again and hoped he would find half a dozen people who felt the same way. He said, I didn't find half a dozen people. Instead, within a month of my plaint appearing in a national newspaper, I received over five hundred letters of support and many many nudes from young women who were absolutely gagging for it uh, <laughs> with a grammar Nazi like me. Not only from all corners of the United Kingdom, but also from America, Australia, France, Sweden, Honkers, Canada. Uh, the website will stay open for reference and interest. Now we have some pictures here of some signage uh, from some sort of low-key businesses, I guess, who have not used... I mean, look, Julia Scissors here, yeah. Julia doesn't even believe that her name warrants a capital J. So, I mean, apostrophe is just out the window, really, at that point, isn't it? Um, again, Fitness One doesn't... I mean, could you reasonably argue that that's a capital F? Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, missing the apostrophe out of um, women's there. I mean... As much as they're a women's fitness place, they clearly don't give two shit about women if they're not even prepared to stick an apostrophe in the word women's fitness. Bella's hair and uh, an access. Hair and access. Not sure what that means, whether or not it's access in the terms of, you know, you pay for access. Like, oh, we're going to throw a gala dinner for us, invite such and such politician over for a, you know, thing. We'll donate money to whatever their charity is, in exchange, that politician has to come and chat with you for a little while and you can do your little business deals or whatever. You, yeah, you're paying for access, aren't you? Maybe hair and access, is it? You know, access to your kids. Karen's taken the kids. Bella. Bella has taken the kids. And uh, you have to go there if you want access. I don't know. Maybe it's access to Bella's, you know, Bella's access, if you know what I mean. Yeah, maybe Bella is prepared to charge you know, to allow you access to her. 
I don't know what the access is, guys. Whether or not the access is at the rear. Where the access is. Guys, let me know in the chat, please. What's going on with Bella's access? The hair bit I get, I'm, I think. I presume it's the hairdressers. Yeah, another hairdressers. But what's the access? Another hairdresser, which I don't say accessories. Don't, don't ruin it. Don't break the fourth wall. Come on, guys. We're all friends here. Another hairdresser who's chosen to give the apostrophe the chop. Fortune Housewares Importing Co. They've doubled, doubled down on that one there. New Way Trading Co. Men, ladies, and kids wear... Uh, wares. Wares. I, yeah, I'm always confused just by the use of wear rather than referring to clothing. There used to be a shop. It was uh, at the back of... Uh, there was a sort of Polish supermarket down on London Road. And at the back of the supermarket, they would sell the sort of... Um, sort of like gangster fancy dress clothes. I mean, to them, it wasn't fancy dress. It was a way of life. But it was the sort of... You make yourself look like a sort of L.A like a parody of an LA drug dealer. Uh, it was clearly popular amongst the community, I guess. Uh, we see some of them come out with T-shirts that sort of go down to the knees, you know, a beanie hat then with another hat, a snapback on top of it, enormous jackets. And they were, they were very keen to let you know that it was 100% genuine wear. I don't, I don't get what well, I'm very, conf very confused by it. Anyway, uh, so, wow, they've, they've, even on street signs, they're, they're missing off apostrophes. Oh, someone's gone and corrected this one. Is that the end of the story? Okay. Um, Joe Mortimer says, oh, jo, sorry, Joe Mumma. Jo Mumma. Jo Mumma. Oh, Joe Mumma. Yeah, ma okay, great. Got that. Took me a, took me a second. Joe Mumma. Written and spoken languages change over time. It's how it's always been and will always be. Okay, mate. Uh, Les, Les Hayward replies, for change, read mangled. Makes sense to try and keep language consistent for good communication and easy learning. Not helped when the Oxford Dictionary accepts any old temporary slang. We really need to get Brexit done. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Guys, what else have we got? Yeah, Prince Charles plans to sack most royals when he becomes king. Wow, that should put the cat amongst the pigeons. What, was you just exile people from the family? How does that work? How do you sack a royal? It's not. Is it a job? Is it considered a job? I don't know. Prince Charles is planning to sack several royals when he becomes king, according to a new report. Prince of Wales, 71, wants a smaller circle around him when he takes over from the Queen, it's been suggested. The heir to the throne has apparently always wanted to reduce the size of the royal family, but it's said to have become keener on the idea after his brother, Prince Noncy Nonce Andrew, was caught up in the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. Deputy editor of the Royal Central uh, Britanni Barga. What? Deputy editor of Royal Central Britanni Barga. Whatever the fuck that is. Told Daily Star Online. Uh, I think the Andrew crisis has definitely strengthened Prince Charles's desire for a slimmed down monarchy. Yeah. Re monarchy 2.0. You think really trim the fat off the monarchy? Yeah, maybe just him. Just him, no no others. Maybe him, Wills, Hazza, uh, and the gals, maybe. Just that's it. You know, get rid of everyone else. Get, I mean, you could have uh, Prince Philip just ground down, fed to horses, something like that. Just have it. I mean, he, I mean, he's certainly retired from public life, but why not just retire him from life? It's not a bad idea, is it? I mean, he's effectively just taken up space at this point. I don't know. Prince Andrew is not is now out of the picture. I don't see him ever undertaking royal duties again. Plus, anyway, he's too busy nonsense. Any hope for his daughters will be gone now too. Uh, so the process of slimming the monarchy has already slowly begun, thanks to the nonsense. Uh, as we know, Charles was pushing uh, his mother to meet with Andrew and have him step down from his royal duties. I was thinking the other day, right, now, throughout history, there have been, you know, conversations that have obviously changed the world and just, like, conversations that would really illuminate, you know, the truth of an event or, or something that, you know, very 
very almost maybe no one other than the people having the conversation have ever heard. But I would love to have heard the conversation between Prince Andrew and the Queen about the whole Epstein situation. Because you just you get to find out so much, like whether or not she knew all along, you know, how much she was in on it, how what like what he had done, what the just the whole situation about it all. Like you hear, like what were the conversations like after with George Bush and people after nine eleven? Like what you know, what were the conversations before various you know events and stuff? Oh, that would have been a juicy number! Come on! Oh, oh, Andrew, really, really are a silly boy for being caught with the nonsense. I mean, God, we have really gone to every length. To get you the youngins that you desire and you deserve. But for you to get caught like this, you silly, silly boy. I'm sorry, Mummy. I'm sorry. I, I just love the long thing so much, you know. And, you know, Jeffrey Shaw did have the best girls out there. And I just couldn't resist. No, oh, real silly boy, Andrew. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to cut your pocket money. Oh, no, Mummy! Yes, we're going to have to cut your quarter of a million a year pocket money. Oh, there'll be less nonsense for a bit for you. No, Mummy, please, no! Sorry, Andrew. That's it. Get him out of here. Go to your bedroom. Naughty Prince. Fucking cunt. Anyway, guys, that's... Uh, that'll do now. Who's this? Who's this fucking idiot? Financier, David Rowland. Right, okay, he looks... I don't know, he's just... He's got a look, hasn't he? He's got a look. Uh, anyway, look, let's play some, <laughs> play some more freaking jams. What have we got? It, Quicksilver by Inside Info. This is going to be on the UKF10 uh, album, so I would not be surprised if this gets me pulled from YouTube. But we'll persevere. Quicksilver, Inside Info. This is a lovely bit of gear. Oh, lovely little nose up. Proper top lip sniffer. Inside info. Quicksilver. Dang, Sam. Your boy doing what? I'd say there's definitely is a reasonable argument for the Queen having killed Epstein herself. Literally, she just slipped in that rear naked and then just got him. Oh, she's a killer, man. She's killed before. She was there when Diana, because she was at the end of the fucking tunnel with the torch. 
She is a killer. Great record. Inside out, uh, in, 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 info inside. Information contained inside. Quick Silver. Follow up to track Billabong. Available uh, at all Fat Willy Surf Shack. Yeah, man, that's a great bit. I'm keen. I'm into it. That's she throw of the week potential, undoubtedly. Ooh! <laughs> yeah, man. I was thinking at the weekend, talking talking of killers, uh, I was thinking at the weekend, I was reminded, I can't really quite remember why, of a guy that I knew once when I lived in Bristol. When I was there, this was... 2005, 2006, I was working for a, a very bad catering agency, doing very bad jobs, predominantly working in the kitchen at the Bristol Ikea. The only thing that made it bearable was that I got to work with George. George was from Uganda, and I would give him a lift uh, every day to the various terrible jobs that they'd put us on. And uh, George was uh, a legend. And I don't. I was trying to work out how old I thought he was. He just. He seemed sort of ageless, but he. Um, yeah, he was hilarious and would just tell me the most terrifying stories that I'd ever heard. I would have been, I don't know, early twenties, twenty two, something like along those lines. Uh, yeah, no, twenty. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, twenty seems about right. And uh, he would laugh all the way through these stories. He was hilarious. He was really made. The, he was the only thing that made these jobs bearable. And one day I drove up to pick him up, and he got in the car, and he went, "William." <laughs> so, yeah, his name was George. He wasn't really. His name wasn't really George, but he. I think he got so fed up with people mispronouncing his God-given name that he just basically adopted the most basic, easiest English name <laughs> that he could. And he's like, "William." Bad news. I was like, oh no, what, what's happening? He said, I, I hear from my brother today. They came for him in the night. I was like, oh, what? And as it transpired that basically his brother had upset, I think he had borrowed money. I can't quite remember what he'd done to upset them, but he had basically upset the Ugandan mob, which is quite high up my list of things to definitely not do. And so he knew they would come for him. So he he hidden a knife, and basically, in the night, the Ugandan mob had arrived at his brother's house and kidnapped him. And the and the trick was that they would do is they would tie you up in a bag in a sack and hang you from a tree until you died of starvation. That was that was the deal you got if you wound up the uh, Ugandan mob, and uh, he. He was telling me this story and then just sort of guffawing with laughter. I think maybe just at the sort of absur absurdity of the of the story. And then it's like, but he knew uh, they were coming, so he's hidden a knife. And basically, why he's, he's waited in the bag, <laughs> tied up in the tree for a while, and then cut himself free. But the bag was really high up in the tree. So he's basically has fallen out and smashed his leg up on the way down and then got bitten by a snake. And managed to somehow get to hospital, but was in hospital for a while with the poisoning. And George was just telling me the story over a scar journey to Ikea. I got like completely... Uh, William, you have to understand. 
these people are killers. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's a good dude, though. I don't know why he came to mind over the weekend, but I hope he's okay. I've God knows what the fuck he's up to now. He was just so happy to not be in that situation, even just working and, you know, doing the washing up in Ikea. He was fucking loving life. He was a good boy. Anyway, enough about George. God bless him. Where are we? Elderly man arrested after complaining uh, to phone operator 24,000 times in two years. This is probably the dude that drove uh, drove Jimmy insane. Might be. An elderly Japanese man has been arrested after complaining to his telecommunications operator 24,000 times over the course of two years. Okay, so that's a thousand times a month. That... Where do you have the time? A thousand times a month. What's that? 30 times a day? 33 times a day? It's more than once an hour. You know, if you were up 24 hours. What? What, what a hero. No, hold on. Uh, the 71-year-old <laughs> named uh, Akitoshi Akamoto repeatedly called telecom company KDDI, often demanding that he receive an apology for alleged contract violations. Maybe they just apologised. According to the local media, some elderly citizens in Japan regularly contact their phone companies to ask about trivial issues such as how to send an email or join Netflix. Sometimes uh, that's reportedly placed in a huge reportedly places a huge burden on customer service staff in the country. Uh, Akamoto is from the city of Kasukab, uh, yeah, Kasukabe, in the central Japanese prefecture, uh, Saint Tama. He was arrested for calling telecom telecom company KDDI's free customer service hotline four hundred and one times during a single week last month. Some of his complaints demanded that the company apologise for violating our contract and for unfair business practices. Local media reports that KDDI did not initially want to press charges against the client over the matter, but continually com- continual complaints began to affect the customer service staff, and Okamoto was subsequently arrested. On average, he reportedly called 33 times a day. Got a real bee in his bonnet with him, hasn't he? <laughs> Uh, local police say that uh, Okamoto was upset over the fact his phone could not pick up radio broadcasts. Uh, yeah, well, that that's rough, man. I guess, it, what was he trying to get? He should have got the uh, Threshold app that works now. Imagine that. Yeah, God, guys, by the way, the Android app has been updated. It works. Guys, guys, if you're listening, the Android app works. Unbelievable. Incredible, unbelievable. I mean, it. I mean, it works if you've got a quite an up-to-date uh, operating system. If not, forget about it. But you know, don't be a boomer. Update your operating system. Uh, meanwhile, in Ireland, a hotel manager recently found a witty way to deal with one customer's complaints. Oh, hold on a second. A commuter may be charged with obstruction of business, which is an offence in Japan that makes it illegal for someone to interfere with a company's ability to carry out their regular business practices. But the probe is ongoing. Meanwhile, in Ireland, a hotel manager recently found a witty way to deal with one customer's complaint, which claimed the room had no daylight, uh, among other downfalls. The reviewer, who was a Danish tourist, took a trip advisor to explain, windows blinded, no daylight. Then went on to add, why didn't I complain on arrival? Because I arrived around 11pm. Okay, okay see, I see, what, see where that's going. Stayed in room 104 and paid 150 euros, exclusive of breakfast. Windows blinded, no daylight. Uh, no separate shower cabin. Only bath top with restricted access. Dirt marks on carpet. Floor in restaurant. All over greasy. <laughs> Nowhere you had the feeling this is clean hotel. Guy in reception tried to explain without acknowledging he facts. Why didn't complain on arrival? Because I arrived around 11pm. I will never even consider to go back. Okay. The hotel manager at the Imperial Hotel in Cork, Ireland, responded uh, to remind the customer that they arrived at 11pm and left at 8am, adding that there wasn't much daylight because darkness is common in Ireland during the night time. <laughs> hey, it's certainly common. Uh, the manager's full reply read, No, I won't. Thank you for taking the time to review our hotel, as you promised. Uh, to our front man- front office manager when he refused to refund your stay. Okay. Uh, you arrived at 11pm and left at 8am. It is the reason why you didn't have much daylight. 
uh, in your room despite the two large windows. It's common in Ireland during night time. These windows are not blinded but frosted to protect your privacy in the room as, uh, as we are based in the heart of Cork City. Uh, you have booked a classic twin room online with a bathtub, so it's exactly what we have allocated to you. Our front office manager didn't invite you to complain on arrival, uh, but we <laughs> uh, we could have changed we could have changed your room allocation if a walking shower was a requirement for you and available. But for that, we need you to mention it to us. My team and myself are really sorry you've decided to not come back to our hotel, and I have amended your guest profile to make sure you do not book a hotel ever again by mistake. <laughs> Oh dear. Good banter. Great, solid banter. Guys, look, there's more stuff for us to get into. Should we play this Caliber bit? I think that would be a nice uh, nice little number. It's called Walking in Circles. Caliber off album called... Wow, it's a whole album. Man, he just... He puts them out, man. You boy, don't fuck about. Wow, okay. Uh, well, the album's called Planet Health. Should we play the title track off the album? Planet Health. Caliber, Planet Health. It's on signature, I'm going to assume it'll be drum and bass, but there's no guarantee. Great, the uh, and uh, crash test, it's appropriately titled name for this. Um, can you send me a message on the Discord with the sort of what phone you're using, what OS, or just here or anything, and just uh. Uh. oh oh, you've got a poor person's phone. Okay, sorry to hear that. Please, everybody, press F to pay respects. Fuck this up, guys. It's actually called Planet Earth, not Planet Health. So looks like no drum and bass in this one. And Shawnee Simpson has in informed me that uh, the album is not drum and bass and that it is an album he wrote after his friend's wake. So, uh, okay. Pro probably should have looked into that first. But it's not something you'd assume. I mean, it sounds lovely. And my shoes are staying on, though. You know what I mean? Uh, should I try a few others? That's quite nice. Okay, well look guys, it's clearly very, very nice. It's 
very, very nice. Perhaps not coffee and memes appropriate. That's fine. It's not for coffee and memes. I know that there is no chance on earth Calibre is out there writing records with coffee and memes in mind. And I think the world would be a worse place if he was. So let's all just thank God for that, you know. Guys, anyway, look, there's a really nice sounding Calibre album out now. It's called Planet Hearth. And I, I, I implore you all to uh, go and listen to it. <sighs> there is um, a new scientific bit, though, which I would like, would like to play. It's called Vapor Trails. I mean, this is also on the UKF album, so I, I think the chances of this video just hanging around on YouTube are zero, zero to none. That's scientific. It's called Vapor... Vapor Ass. It's called Vapor Ass. Okay, guys? And if anyone tells you differently, they're a communist. Okay, good. Guys, just quickly before the end, man finds what is believed to be Britain's biggest crisp. Woo! 
It's always fun when you find an immutant version of a food stuff you love, whether it's a double shreddy or a finger of Kit Kat uh, that's made entirely of chocolate. Um, but all those are nothing compared to this absolute beast one bloke found recently. Having opened up his packet of crisps to find a whopper so large it's believed to be Britain's biggest crisp. Wow. Daniel Higginbotham. Wow. Higginbotham, 44, uh, picked up the hench snack from a Morrison store on his way to work last week. Wow. Um, best day of his life, I guess. Uh, he treated himself to 150 gram, to 150 gram of the own brand, the best sweet chili crisps for lunch. But got peckish and ended up cracking them open before midday. <laughs> uh, but when the auditor turned up the one pound bag, he was surprised to find a massive six inch crisp there waiting for him. Daniel from Mansfield, North Am uh, Nottinghamshire said, Ah, uh, yeah, put it on the bottle, like, yeah, put it on, and it just kept going, and then I was like, what hell, man? Um, it was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so I wouldn't get any cheap measure. I was fucking six inches of bastards longer than my shaft, like. Well, I tell you, the missus will be there uh, talking happy about it tonight when I stop this in there and send me a unit. Oh, quite happy, I It's the biggest crisp I've ever seen. Everybody wants to find a big crisp, don't they? It's true, they do. Nice use of, what's that, pound coin for scale. Fuck, that's a big boy. Damn, that is a big ridgy boy, isn't it? <whistles> Damn, what is one big crispy boy? Daniel said his colleagues flocked to his desk to marvel at his discovery. Um, a likely story. They just wanted to nab a crisp, uh, but was confused to hear that some people didn't share his joy. He continues, some weren't that interested at all. Fuck, cut them out of your life. You do not need that negativity. But I quickly, but, but I, quickly I locked it away. Uh, just in case someone crushed it. Yeah, some fucking commie, probably. Just thinking that crisps are the, uh, you know, construct of the bourgeoisie. Seen Corbyn in his fucking suit, looking like Conor McGregor. Right, okay, mate. Yeah, nice one. Got another bloody millionaire in your tailored suit. Aren't you going on about how you're not a millionaire when you're a millionaire? Nice one, Corbs. He's only the only good thing about Corbs is that he's not Boris. That's all he's got going for him. Um, come on, I couldn't leave you without a quick Corbin rant at the end, guys. Let's the end of the show. Fucking hell, fuck this big crisp, man. Fuck that big crisp, yeah. Bunda, bunda. Oh, I had more in it than it should have. Anyway, guys, look. Uh, it's the end of the show, and it will be back. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, there's no other shows. I mean, I, I, I God, fucking Nora, man. State of this. Uh, yeah, be back tomorrow at ten, 10 in the morning. You know, for this um, this whole shebang again. This routine, this ridiculousness, this descent into insanity. What's on the cards for this week in general? Gonna get a new version of the iPhone app today. Up with some bug fixes. It'll have dark mode. Uh, it will, there was a bug with the lock screen, that's fixed. Um, yeah, dark mode will be fully enabled, so you can have it black if that's the way you choose to live your life. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'm just saying I li I'm glad we live in a society where you can do it. Oh, a bit windy pops today. What else? I'm starting working on the Android app, the new one from scratch. But uh, the, yeah, I mean, I guess to a select few, the... Uh, the, there is a working version of the Android app if you have the exact right combination of device and software. This is, this is a thing with Android, right? Like, I don't know, but surely... Well, I guess big apps have, like, a budget and stuff, don't they? To, you know, teams, like full-timers, multiple people to, to deal with that sort of thing. No, it's just little old me. 
uh, guys. Thank you to everyone that's supporting on Patreon. You're wonderful folk. Uh, would not be here without you. Squared Cornford, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss and Squidgy Beats, Polly Hutton, Kieran R, Mike Kaczynski, Matt Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Ryan Van Thunderbuck, Mike Pyler, the answer, Richard France, Thomas Hold, Chode Ryder, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blusher, Dawson Greaves, Cooper, Gilly Lightfield, James Parry, Hender by Tendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, God, no STDs, MZMC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Kaka Shiva, Dan Elton, Mr. Pope. Uh, Dark Progressive Side Trans actually superior drama base. Chris Bates, the build. Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D. Janet, Jimmy Flaxis, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robinson, Dav Smasher, Connor Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, Cosmic Waff, Meat Loaf, Nick Brock, Sean Simpson, Robin Card, Hugh Dana, Sarah Hunt, the Hitchmas, Will Lay, Ben Virgo, Dan Tweed, Lupe Zalazar, Big Watch, My Hill, Mighty Danny, Carl Lewis, Gordon and Liz, Tom Skipper, unfortunately it's George DC, Anthony Sharp, Claud Claudio Loveschmeer, Ben Ish, Ramos J, Timmy, John Forsyth, Anderton, PSN Godlike, MC Hammer Daddy, Your Mum, Leonardo Gervais, Big Gate, Chapter 13, Grant Shepherd, and Death Disco. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay out of trouble. You know, be nice to each other. And fucking sling dick with three hands. All right. God bless you. I'll uh, see you in hell. Working so